For this problem, we're trying to put this equate, quadratic equation, 3x squared minus 30x plus 73, into graphing form. And here is the graphing form that we want. y equals a, x minus h squared plus k. This will allow us to see what the vertex is, um, and that allows us to graph it pretty quickly. So in order to get this portion right here that's squared, we need to actually complete the square. So you'll see that we're going to do this in the middle of our work here. So as we examine over here, this is just our given equation. And so far, we just complete the square with a leading coefficient of 1. So what we've done here is we've taken the two terms with the variables, and we've factored out that leading coefficient of 3 so that it is ready for us to go ahead and complete the square. So that's the justification for that first step, just factoring the first two terms. So now that it's written in this form, we're go we are ready to go ahead and complete the square with the x squared minus 10x. So right now we have 3 times x squared minus 10x, and we have a plus 73. Well, so with the x squared minus 10x, we can go ahead and put that into our generic rectangle, x squared. We know that for it to be a square, these two sides have to be exactly the same, so that on the outside, x minus 5, x minus 5, those match, it's a square. That also tells us that what we need here is a 25. Okay, And we didn't have 25, we had something else. But notice it's 3 times all of this. So really, it's 3 times everything in this square here. Well, if we're going to add a 25 here, we need to make sure our equation stays balanced. And one of the ways we can do that is if we're going to add 25, which is being multiplied by 3, to make it balanced, we could also subtract 3 times 25. So you can see that we basically added 75. If you multiply 3 and 25, you get 75. And we subtracted 75. So our equation is still balanced. We do need to bring down this plus 73. So we've rewritten this, and we have 3 times. We have x minus 5 squared. We created that square. Minus... 3 times 25 plus 73. Right? And so that's the step here. Adding and subtracting 3 times 25 on the same side keeps it balanced, keeps our equation true. So what are the next steps as we're working to get it into that graphing form? Well, all we did here was we took negative 3 times 25 and we simplified it. We just multiplied that out. Um, so I'm just going to label that as multiplication. And then the last thing we did was we just went ahead and simplified that some more by writing this in factored form, x minus 5. Oop, that needs a squared. Let's go ahead and put that squared there. That's important. And then we combined these two terms to get the minus 2. Okay. Um, and we'll just call that rewriting. Uh, and your copy does not have this other little, that had the squared on the inside instead of the outside on my copy. Your copy does not have that. So that should not be there. The squared should be on the outside. So now it is written in that graphing form, y equals 3, x minus 5 squared minus 2. And that's going to be really useful to help us graph and gather some key information. Now that we have our equation written in graphing form, it makes it really easy to see the vertex. Remember, the vertex is h and k. h is whatever value is being subtracted. And in this case, the value that's being subtracted is a positive 5. Here's our k value. So 5, negative 2 is where the vertex is. And then our domain, we know this is going to be a parabola. And go ahead and put the vertex over 5, down 2. It opens upwards. Um, the domain is 
parabolas, this parabola stretches forever to the left and forever to the right, all inputs would work. So x is all real numbers, or you could say it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range, we know our parabola opens upwards. So the y values start at negative 2 and go up from there. y is greater than or equal to negative 2. And then I need to go ahead and graph some more points. And I know because of this 3, right, it's going ahead and it's being stretched vertically. Um, so it's really kind of three times as steep. And I could go in and plug some points in. I could plug in 4 and 3 and see where those points are and go ahead and graph them. And I would find that as I go out 1 in each direction, I would go up 3 on each side. A little hard for me to be accurate with the stylus. Um, and then I would go up 9 in each direction. So let's see, my points would be I have 5, negative 2, right? I would have 4, 1, and 6, 1. The other points I could go ahead and graph are 3, and then it goes up 9 more, so 3, 10, and 7, 10. And then I could go ahead and graph those points and get a pretty accurate graph. And there we go.